Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and I want to talk to you today about the three billion year old molecule called melatonin. Pretty much pigeonholed as the, the darkness hormone, the sleep hormone, the hormone that we take before we go to bed or if we have jet lag so we get a good night's sleep. But few people realize the importance of melatonin. Now in Ayurvedic medicine, we talk about the circadian cycles, living in sync with the natural cycles as, as a fundamental principle. Modern science is suggesting that circadian science will, will revolutionize medicine as we know it. And the king of the circadian cycle is melatonin. So think about melatonin as way more than the sleep home hormone for the 60 million people who have trouble sleeping. But think of melatonin, at the, as the sun sets, melatonin levels begin to rise. And maybe you get this much melatonin and that's enough for you to go to sleep and stay asleep. But there's another 50 or more percent of melatonin production that can do amazing things for your health and your longevity. And the problem is, is that as we age, recent studies show that our melatonin levels begin to decrease. So melatonin, if we could keep it at high levels throughout our entire life, would do wondrous things for our health and longevity and the protection of chronic disease. For example, melatonin is a precursor for the other two most powerful antioxidants in the body, glutathione and superoxide dismutase. But melatonin on its own is like an amazing and the most powerful antioxidant. So when you sleep at night, if you get enough melatonin to get you to sleep, or maybe you don't get enough melatonin to get you to sleep, you're not gonna get that full dose of melatonin to actually amp up the melatonin levels in your body to scrub every single cell in your body. And melatonin is the only molecule that has carte blanche. It can get to every cell anywhere in the body at any time. And even in one study, they showed that when they gave um, women who were pregnant melatonin orally in a supplemental form, the melatonin increased the production of glutathione and superoxide dismutase in the fetus, not just in the fetus, but in the fetus's brain. And also melatonin levels were amped up within an hour of, of that supplementation in both the mom and in the baby. So this molecule is really important. Every cell on the planet from the first cell that, that, that exists on the planet had a connection to the light dark cycles and melatonin production. So this is a very, very important molecule. It's been shown to, to uh, regulate the function of over 10 different hormones. What it does is when there's a thing that we call, we have now, which is called the endless summer effect. And I've been writing a lot about circadian cycles lately. And I, I invite you to go to lifespot.com and read all my articles on circadian science and melatonin. It's really fascinating. But melatonin regulates the production of about 10 different hormones. And what it does is that it, it's affected by darkness. So if we, just I say the sun goes, to, goes down at six o'clock at night, but you don't go to bed till 11 o'clock at night. So that's uh, five or six hours of your, of your body, your brain thinking that it's light out and it's summertime. So every night that we go to bed after the sun sets and we do that regularly, on average, people get about a thousand hours a year of artificial light, suggesting to the brain that it's summertime, because that's the only time summer the light is, is, is you know, available for such a long time. So we have this thing called the endless summer effect. And at the end of the summer, if you look at nature, we have harvest fruits and carbohydrates and grains and nuts and seeds, things that are gonna store as fat and extra fuel to insulate us and give us a fuel reserve for the long winter, the famine that's coming. So we have a feast at the end of the summer and we have a famine coming. We've been doing that for millions of years. We're wired for that. We know about that. And we again, it's triggered by, by the longer days that happen in the summertime. And the long, more we have light, the body starts thinking the famine is coming, the famine is coming. And then we gorge, gorge, gorge on fruits, fructose, and carbohydrates, grains, and things like that. So of course, carbohydrates get a bad name because, because they do have a lipophilic effect. But that's what we want to have happen at the end of the summer to prepare for winter, to store all this extra food. When we have an endless summer effect, we have a, a lot of bad things happen. We see cortisol levels don't, don't go down, and, and therefore uh, the cortisol levels stay high. 
and we have a sleep issue. We have insulin levels rising and in effect to, to take the sugar and put it and store it. The insulin is trying to store that extra sugar as fat. We have, we have increased estrogen levels, which also are a growth hormone, help us store as fat. We have a decrease in leptin, which makes us hungry all the time. So we have all these hormones trying to figure out what, we should, what should we do based on the fact that the light is artificial for so long. So it's very, very important. And the effect of that is classically diabetes. It's an it's a excess sugar in our system kind of an effect. And the pendulum swing that we've created to sort of stop that is a paleo-esque diet, which in extreme way is just meat and vegetables. But historically, it's quite clear that paleo folks didn't eat just meat and vegetables. They had a good chunk of their, of their diet as grains and starches. I mean, two million years ago, we, we genetically evolved to produce our own amylase enzyme, which is specifically exclusively for starch. So somewhere around two million years ago, we, we, we evolved to, to actually make this enzyme for starch. So clearly we were eating starch two million years ago uh, because we have this enzyme that came around around that time to actually do that. So, so we were eating a lot of starch. It wasn't just meat and vegetables, but it was in balance. And right now it's way out of balance. And what, one of the fundamental things that are out of balance is our sleep cycles and how important that is. So, so in my next video, I'm going to talk to you about um, how to bring your melatonin levels into balance with foods and lifestyle and things like that, because there, interestingly, there is melatonin in some foods, which are very, very important. And I'm not a fan of melatonin supplementation. Short term for jet lag, the science is really clear. Long term, there are some issues. And I want to talk about that in my next video, in my next article. But I, what I do suggest is if you're ha having trouble sleeping, if you're, you know, I mean, melatonin, uh, lack of melatonin at night has been linked to uh, osteoporosis. Uh, melatonin, what it does when, it, when you have a good amount of it, that extra amount of melatonin, it increases osteoblastic activity, which makes bone density. It decreases the osteoclastic activity, which robs you of good bone. It's been linked to uh, a reduction of many different cancers, including breast cancer and prostate cancer and prostate health and Alzheimer's disease and cognitive de de decline as we age. So many of the age-related conditions that we have are due to the fact that potentially because of so much artificial light, we are, are not getting the full dose of melatonin. And if we could get a full dose of melatonin, magical things would happen. And, that's, and the point of this discussion is to, number one, help you understand first what your melatonin levels are. And I highly suggest you get your melatonin levels tested. We have a test kit you can take at home. You, you, it's a urine sample that you send in at different times of the day. And we tell you exactly what your cortisol levels are in the daytime, what your melatonin levels are at night. And you can figure out, oh boy, I'm a mess. I better get this figured out. I better lock into a lifestyle, turn off the, the cell phones and the computer screens and the TV, which has blue light that literally instantly shuts your melatonin levels down. And if you're doing that at night before bed, then you're getting, you're getting you know, zero head start in terms of melatonin production. There's no way you're going to get a full dose of melatonin into the night. Very, very important information. Um, please read the article uh, associated with this video at lifespot.com where I go into the details of why we should know what our melatonin levels are. It may save you years of chronic problems down the road. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Duyard. Hi, did you like this video? Do you like our content here at LifeSpa? You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash John DeYard right here and get this valuable content every week in your inbox. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.